In this Lightroom tutorial, we are gonna take this photo and get really creative with it. We're gonna turn it into this photo. I'm gonna be upfront with you. If you're not somebody that likes to push the boundaries and do some interesting things that maybe not be true to, to perfect true photography, stop watching the video now. But for everybody else, and I know there's a lot of people that love this stuff, we're gonna do some pretty dramatic things here because what happens is a lot of times, you know, we capture a well-captured photo. That, that's always first and foremost. And I think this is, this is a well-captured photo. It's just the light wasn't great. So we can do some really interesting things and make it pretty dramatic and, and quite a deviation from where it started from. Big thanks to Marsha Colucci. Uh, Marsha submitted this photo. And every once in a while, I like to do use photos from my subscribers. Better than always using my photos. I don't always have the perfect photo for it. And also better than going to a, a stock web, free stock photo website or Unsplash and taking really an already edited photo and trying to edit it again. So big thanks to Marsha for letting me use this. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're inside of Lightroom Classic here. And before we get started on creative stuff, I would say do any cropping or anything like that at this point. For me, the only thing, it, it, we could crop it. It doesn't really need a crop, but it is leaning to the right. There's a little bit of a vertical perspective problem. So we could go to our transform panel and just hit auto and that should take care of um, any of those vertical lines that were in there. From here, we move to the basic panel and we can't do everything we want here. She, number one, Marsha, she captured a well-exposed photo, which you always need. You always need to capture good photography. And I think she captured a great scene here. It's just the light was kind of flat. You can see if I pull the exposure back, it was just an overcast day, bright sky. But a lot of times you, you are where you are at the time that you are. You don't get to go back to them over and over again. So I go into creative mode here. I do this and look, wow, there's some interesting interesting light happening here and on the walls here and on the ground. So I want to take advantage of that. I can't really do it with my global tools over here. These are going to be too heavy handed. So what I would do is just make the decision. I want to make this, I already know I'm going to go very creative with this and make it more dramatic. Do, and I want to make it darker. So do I make the whole thing darker and add light in places? Or do I keep the whole thing bright and then dark in places? So for me, I'm always typically gonna go make the whole thing darker and then just add light where I want to. I find that process a little bit easier. All right, so we'll just go in here and pull our exposure down right about there. I'm gonna go up here to my masking tools because that's where I can get really creative and start to relight things. So we're gonna head down to the radial gradient and we're gonna make our exposure a little bit brighter here. And then what I'm gonna do is just click and drag and just add gradient right in the middle here. And then whenever I make it, of course, I'm going to make it brighter there, but I'm also going to make it a little bit warmer. Okay, not as much here because I think it's already got a warm feeling to it. But whenever you brighten a dark area, it tends to get very cool. The shadows are cool and you have to warm them because then they'll look milky, almost just blah. So we can go in here and add that. If you happen to notice too much in the sky, and I don't here, um, but if you happen to notice too much in the sky, you can always go to that radial gradient and you can always subtract from it. And I can subtract the sky. Select sky would select the sky, but if you go to subtract it, it actually just remove it from what you just created on there. Okay. So now we have just a little bit of a spotlight in the middle. Let's create a new mask. Same thing. We're going to do a few more of these. I'm going to create one. I think this is an interesting area over here on the right hand side. So right around this wall here, and let's just open up that exposure. And then you can experiment with shadows too. They both do it in a different way and it's impossible to give you the one way to do it. And even whites, whites will really boost some of the bright stuff in there and that can work as well. So I'm just, I can't give you one way to do it. I can just tell you they're all going to work and they're going to work differently depending on what is already existing in the photo. So keep them all in your toolbox there to know that if one starts to look funky, maybe go try shadows and whites if exposure doesn't work. And then just like before, we can warm it up a little bit. So I think, I think this whole doorway here and this whole wall, I'm naturally gonna leave this dark because that, that'll create a little bit of a vignette for us. It'll, we won't even have to add a vignette later on. We still probably will, but. Let's come back up here to create new mask and I'll go to another radial gradient. And I think this is an area of interest over here. So let's just make a large radial gradient on the left-hand side. 
open up that exposure, experiment a little bit with the shadows, and a little bit of temperature in there to add some warmth. Down here at the bottom, I'd like to illuminate this path a little bit. So we'll create another new mask. We'll go to the brush tool this time and I'll increase the exposure here. And what I like is I would rather, rather you hit the right bracket key, use a larger brush. I have the feather set to 100%, both the flow and density also. And what I like is that with a high feathered brush, if I paint in the middle, it naturally creates a fall off. And that's how light works, light falls off. It's not gonna be a hard line and to select this whole pathway perfectly. So that's the way light would work. And I think by brushing that way, we can help it out a little bit. So a little bit of exposure, a little bit of whites, and then warm it up a little bit as well. All right, from here, I think we'll go create one more new mask. I'm gonna use the brush tool. And then I'm gonna use this as almost just a catch-all. I'm just going to paint throughout the photo here. Okay, I'm going to increase the exposure and I'm just going to hit the left bracket key to make the brush smaller. And then I'm going to paint around places that I think are interesting. So up here in that window, uh, maybe down here, a little bit down here, up in this area. I like this wall. I'm going to make it a little bit brighter. A couple of these doors over here. Okay, and it just keeps your eye moving around. All the interest that we're, we're painting in, a couple things a little bit brighter, things are a little bit darker. It just helps add that depth, that depth, the difference between what's bright and dark and gives an overall dimensionality to the image here. Breaking in for a very quick, less than 60 second word from our sponsor. If you like what you see here, this comes from my No Light, No Problem series. And the, the concept behind that is that you go out, either it's a candid moment that you couldn't control or it's a place where you can't go back and the light wasn't great when you went there and you, you want to take a well-captured photo and, and improve it and make it more like what you hoped it would be or a little bit more dramatic or try to do something with the light that was existing in the photo. So I encourage you to swing by the link. I've got volume one and two, depending on when you go in the, in the week after this video is released, volume three will be released, but very affordable course, affordable price point, bite-sized chunk videos, and you'll learn lots of techniques, lots of repetition to use them on different photos in different situations as well. Each one is less than two hours long, so you can get through them really quick and learn a ton while you're doing it. Okay, let's get back here. Time to just finish things up. We can create one more new mask and we can select the sky. And then we can just make it a little bit darker. We can, I don't wanna go super crazy with it. You know, you can go Game of Thrones and make it super dark. It's just gonna look weird. So I just wanted to make it a little bit darker, like so, something right around there. And we do have some options for this, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. But for now, I think that's a, a pretty good exposure for that. And let's hit done for our, oh, we got one more thing to do. Let's turn the light on. Let's create another new mask and we'll use the radial gradient and we'll just draw a small one right inside that light, hit the exposure and some temperature, crank it up. And then what I'll do a lot of times is I'll create another new one and I'll make one just a little bit bigger than the original one, all right? But I'm not gonna go quite as bright with it. So we'll just put that right into the middle there and then I'll make that a little bit brighter there, but I'm not gonna go crazy and make it as bright as the other one was. So that'll help us turn on the light. So from here, we can close out of our masking tools. A uh, couple of finishing touches here. I think the whole photo can use some texture. It's very textured to begin with and the texture adjustment's just gonna enhance that. So I think it can use some texture. Nothing wrong with coming back and doing some micro adjustments to the whole photo with your basic panel. As a whole, you're gonna adjust the photo here. Maybe I bring that exposure up a little bit and maybe I even go down to effects and add a light vignette just to darken the edges even more and really funnel our attention in here toward the middle. And then from there, if you really wanted to add a little bit of creative color treatment to it, you could head over to the profile section above the basic panel. I think you could go a couple of different ways here. The best black and white presets plugins out there than, than anything are the black and white adjustments in this profile section. You don't need a plugin for this stuff. There's so many good black and whites in here. So you could go in here and turn this one to a black and white, which I think would work really well. And then I think a lot of the modern presets look really good too. I like modern 10. 
kind of like modern eight. It's got that matte look to it. I can try modern eight and maybe just bring the amount down, which is almost like opacity. So it gives us a little bit of that color tinting toward the end of the photo. People use profiles in different ways. You can use them in the beginning. You can only add one to a photo. Some people use them in the beginning. Some people use them in the end. I use it honestly where, wherever the mood is at the time where I'm editing. I don't have a rule for when I'm gonna use one. Now, if we hit the backslash key, we can see our before and after. So that's before and that's after. Much more interest, lots of depth, just very creative uh, with what we had here. Now, if we wanted to finish it up, there's a little wire here. We can't get rid of that inside of Lightroom, so we could jump over into Photoshop. And I'm gonna do it because I wanna show you one quick thing. And that is, let's go to the Spot Healing Brush, Command or Control Plus to zoom in. Hit the left bracket key, make it a little bit smaller, and just go over here and just paint. We can get rid of that pretty easily. Okay. If it doesn't work, if ever leaves a little bit of a line, which I think it, it is here, you could always go to the healing brush. The healing brush, the difference is we hold down Option or Alt to sample, and then we go and we click and we paint, and that gives us a little bit more control over what we're doing here, okay? And you might want to use your left bracket key, make the brush smaller, and really have to go in and get a little closer to the edges there. No need to be perfect in this one. Close enough is close enough. And if you wanna be picky, you can get rid of it on the bricks too. Be a little bit better than I was at it, but nobody's gonna notice the deviation up there. And then the last thing I was gonna say would be the reason why I really wanted to jump to Photoshop. We can experiment with a sky replacement. Uh, edit sky replacement and there's some interesting cloudy ones in Adobe's free library here so we could go try it see how it looks you know it, it's almost the same right they're they're almost it's two different cloudy skies so we can go with something maybe a little bit more dramatic that's got a little light which I actually do like it's got a little bit more light in it it's almost a, a, a storm rolling in on a partly sunny day uh, which gives us a little bit more interest up there. So I would be okay with that one as well. And then all you would do is just come up here to file, save, uh, save the image. That'll save a copy of it back over to Lightroom. So when we do flip back over to Lightroom, we have our, our final image, but we can always just go to our before image and hit reset on that file and then go to the new file so we can see our before and after there. And some quick little finishing touches that'll do a lot of times once I get it back, remember, we can do micro adjustments here. So sometimes I'll go and I'll just hit auto. I'll see what Lightroom gives me because it does help unify the photo with some final global adjustments. It's usually gonna boost the whites my in my taste too much. Um, so I'll usually pull back on some of the whites and blacks and, and what it does there and even the exposure. But overall, just a couple of quick little tiny adjustments at the end, uh, I think can also help. Now, in this video, I used quite a few of the masking tools that are fairly new inside of Lightroom Classic and Adobe Camera Raw. They're the same thing. If you're not familiar with those tools, I've got a free video right here that you can watch to get you up to speed. It's, a, it's an in-depth video, so make sure you got a solid 15 plus minutes to sit down and watch it. But if you're not familiar with those tools and you need to get up to speed on how to use them because they are incredibly powerful tools, this video would be a great place to go next.